Audionic's new map, MIDI Fire, is a pretty elaborate MIDI utility that does all kinds of different stuff. But when I was faced with this awesome MIDI power, the first thing I thought of was, this is the solution to one of my biggest gripes with making music on iOS, which is I hate switching apps. Like I, I'm in the middle of a flow of something, I don't wanna have to switch apps. So you can kind of get a run with uh, out doing that using things like uh, OM, where you just load up a whole bunch of apps and then you've got them all in, in one place, but you still need to switch back to whatever sequencing all of that. Not anymore though, because I'm gonna be able to use MIDI Fire to create a Bluetooth connection between two different iPads, the one that I've got in front of me and this one, and I'll have Fugue Machine sequencing from here, sending Bluetooth MIDI over to the uh, iPad in front of me, which will be sending out all this sequenced data now to uh, my apps. So I can change the sequence or I can change the musical apps without having to switch between apps at all. So I've got everything immediately accessible, which is gonna be awesome. So let's do that. Uh, the first thing that we've got to do is the configuration that will be going on this iPad. And that's really easy. We just need to take a, a MIDI input from Fugue Machine and route that to a uh, Bluetooth connection. So to do that, we're, we're gonna create one. I'll set up a host service on this iPad and I'll advertise the MIDI service. And now on this iPad, I'll swap into MIDI Fire, hit the setup and connect to device. And we are connected. So now I can take a MIDI destination of iPad 3 Bluetooth and just drag and, and we're connected. Like that, that was it. Now I can send this over to this iPad and I'll, I'll be ready to immediately start sending over MIDI to this iPad. That was that easy. Now to save and share this is super easy because we've got the option here under the scenes menu where we can save it and give it a name. And then we can share that either via email or uh, iMessage, or we can uh, now load it up by simply hitting the load button and we're right back to where we were before. Now the configuration just made is running on this iPad. And when I hit the playhead over here in Fugue Machine, it's immediately lighting up with life over here. And we can see that if I bring up an event monitor we see that uh, there's all these uh, notes coming across from four different channels. And the reason for that is I've configured Fugue Machine to send its uh, individual playheads on individual channels, which makes uh, you know this whole connection super easy. But there's a downside to this. Now we've got to separate this or else we're going to just jam all these channels at one app. And that's not necessarily going to work out very well. So we can manage this by creating discrete paths for each of those channels using the channel strip. Tidy things up a bit here. So right now we've still got all those channels coming through, but with the channel strip, I can say only allow stuff from channel one. And now we're only seeing the channel one data on this end. Now for the other channels, Add in three more channel strips. I can quickly connect these by tapping on the output and then hitting the inputs. And now I can say, okay, this one turn that off. This one is going to only allow from two, but some apps aren't going to necessarily be listening to channel two. So it's uh, better safe than sorry. I'm going to remap the outgoing channel to one. So now if I grab this and put that in there, we're seeing that it's only seeing the channel one stuff. Now we're also seeing stuff from this, but it's only the channel one stuff. And if I deactivate that now, I can see that over here, we're still getting that big mess. But as I change this now to only allow incoming from three, 
Now it's down to giving us just notes uh, from channel three, but I'm remapping that now all to channel one. And the same with channel four. And if this seems tedious, you only have to do this once. Like you can save the scene and then immediately recall all this. So we've now got our four channels all split out into their own discrete paths. Now, there's a lot of ways that you could send this out. You could be using the virtual MIDI ports on other apps. Uh, and in this case, I think it's gonna be easier if I just use the virtual MIDI input uh, output ports here. So I'm gonna say I wanna use four and I'm only gonna bring in three of the outs. So And we can make that connection, or we could uh, do a drag to make the connection. And for this fourth one, I'm actually going to give it a hardware destination using my uh, USB interface. And you should hear this as soon as I make the connection. This is going out to my Prophet 12, and you can immediately hear what it's doing. And I'm playing with the knobs. So it's working. We're getting the MIDI playheads over here doing things over here, including sending out a hardware MIDI signal to hardware synth. Now, we've got all these virtual MIDI ports that we can now send into OM, um, and I just so happen to have OM um set up with three apps. So now I can go into these and say, listen to the... MIDI Fire Channel 1. Two. And three. Now, there's a lot of other utility available in here. It's easy to transpose things over here, but let's say it's not that you're working with the sequencer that's a pain in the ass to transpose. You can actually do that in here. Just saying, hey, let's knock that up. But now you, you could hear the difference already. So it's, it's super easy to just make the MIDI do what you want it to do. It's not complicated at all. You don't really have to even understand the MIDI other than I'm connecting this thing to that other thing. Uh, if you do understand the MIDI though, there's some even greater tools in here. Like there's uh, OSC, um, the uh, stream biter that actually lets you create your own module to do weird, weird things to MIDI and a tracking clamp, which is gonna be ex especially helpful to guitarists, but I'm not a guitarist, so I would be a poor demonstrator of that. But I hope that this has been informative and like showing you exactly how much power is available here because I, this, is, this is the dream I'm living right here. I've got my arm set up with these apps that I can now tweak right here with my sequencer over here so I could, I never have to swap. Everything is right here with an easy finger grasp. It's all happening. I'm happy. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy, folks.